Mm, that's drunk. Before we got inundated with Flintstone stuff based on the 1994 movie starring John Goodman, the Super Nintendo had a good old-fashioned Flintstones game going off of the original cartoon for source material called Flintstones The Treasure of Sierra Madrock, made by Taito in early 1994. And much to my surprise, this game isn't just your run-of-the-mill, run-to-the-right, hop-and-bop platformer. Well, alright, there's plenty of that here, but the game is structured to be a multiplayer board game. The Grand Puba is retiring, but first he plans a contest where whoever Whoever finds this thing called the Treasure of Sierra Madrock, no doubt a play on the 1920s novel Treasure of the Sierra Madre, will be the next great poobah, leader of the Water Buffaloes. The way this works is actually pretty interesting. You start out standing on a world map, only you can't move. You gotta press the Y button to roll a die, which indicates how many spaces you can go. For instance, here I rolled a 1, so I go right over here and complete a simple platforming level. It's B to jump and Y to use your club to bash enemies to make it to the end of the level, then you're back on the world map, and it's Barney's turn to roll a die, and yes, even when playing single player, you play as both for some reason. In this level that Barney lands on, he's gotta jump over these prehistoric cattle, like something out of Sunset Riders. It's back to Fred's turn, and again he rolls a 1, but Barney already completed that level, so he just sits and waits until it's his turn again. Barney again rolls a 1, which brings him to some kind of timed bonus level, so yeah, as you can see, the levels and settings are varied throughout, and they may not always be the most interesting or engaging, but hey, there's at least some nifty obstacles in the way, like these waves that push you back, or this shark that takes out the ground beneath you, and the board game structure here makes this game unique, if nothing else. You can also land on places like amusement parks, which cost admission to get in, and if you don't have enough stuff collected from the previous levels you've gone through, you can't do anything and it's the other player's turn, and they get a chance at it, if they have enough clams. I should mention that if you die on one of the platforming levels, you go back a space and you lose your turn. Eventually, both Fred and Barney go in different directions on the board, which leads to all sorts of other stuff you can do, like shops and minigames where you can earn health upgrades and extra lives, there's the occasional boss fight, and even Mode 7 races. All the while, on the main board, Wilma and Betty are wandering around trying to find you, and if they catch up to you, you get dragged all the way back toward the beginning. The thing is, though, they each move independently on the board, and sometimes you can see them, in which case you can actually take your time and wait before rolling the die and moving to the next spot to make sure you you don't run into them. So yeah, getting moved back that far sucks, but there is a way to avoid it. As if you can't tell already, this is an excellent representation of the Flintstones cartoon, featuring all the characters looking exactly like they did on the show, and it's got the classic Flintstones theme as well. <laughs> not much to the platforming sections, unfortunately. The only two extra things you can do here are climb trees and float a bit after a jump by holding the B button. There's also ramps here and there which you can fly off of. And as you can see, the sprite animation here is great. If nothing else, the controls work well and are extremely forgiving, making this an easily approachable game for even the most novice of players. But unfortunately, that may be what ends up keeping people away from this game. There's just zero challenge here, and the game really gets repetitive. Once you've played through about 20 minutes or so, you've seen like 90% of the game and it's just more of the same over and over again until either Fred or Barney reach the end of the board and become Grand Poobah. The boss fights in particular are really lacking. I really wish they were a bit more varied and offered more of a challenge, but oh well. I should mention that there is a password system here, but uh, it looks like this. So yeah, this is one of those situations where if you use a password to continue a game, you'll want to take a picture of the screen with your phone. But yeah, despite all that, I would still recommend this game, but only for a specific audience. I can see how some people would get bored to tears with something like this, but this might be right what the doctor ordered for some people. For instance, if you're a parent and you want to get your young child into gaming, I'm talking like three or four years old, this would be an easy way to do so. It's a cheerful, bright, and colorful game with immediate controls that are really forgiving and easy to get used to, and the board game structure really gives this game a unique spin. If that sounds like something that'd be useful to you, then you won't be disappointed with the Flintstones treasure of Sierra Madrock. All right, I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.